I'm so keen to check this out. Uh, Jolt, I'm turning on. I want to do my FPS. I want to see what's changed. FPS template. Jiggle, guys, Jiggle Physics. They got the anime girl too. They know they know their audience. Whoa, okay, look at this. Look, areas look different now. They have like a full filled in effect. That's nice. Okay, I wanted to look at the patch notes for Godot for 4.4. 4. Beta 1 has dropped and I haven't looked at it yet. I don't think there's anything game breaking in this update. 4.5 I think is gonna be huge. I swear to God, every time this, this engine gets updated, it just gets better and better. I, what I wanna do is number one, see if it breaks my asset pack because I haven't updated that in a second. Normally for our beta one summarizes the most exciting changes, but the team managed to merge unusually large number of exciting PRs right before the beta this time around. Some of the exciting changes that are new to this, but a short word of warning, uh, <laughs> new means untested. Nice. Dude, crazy. New in beta one, breaking changes. UID support, that's really good, I think, um, because you can ref refer to that instead of like a, a, a file path, which means you won't have to like worry about reorganizing everything. Okay, so that's huge, but I don't think this is gonna break anything because they're not taking out string paths yet. Floats converted to springs now display as decimal by default. How is this breaking? Sorry, I, I'm just a little bit confused. I guess it maybe depends on if you've got stuff expecting a single digit. I don't know, key modifier cost? I don't understand this. To correct value, unlike, unlikely to directly affect any projects. I don't know, control offset star, get set type change from int to float. Uh, now explicitly requires the mesh to be manifold. I don't actually understand what that means. How, how dumb am I? I got these updates, I'm just like, I don't get it. Um, open XR action maps, string name dictionary keys are saved as is without being converted to string beforehand. For the majority of cases, this shouldn't cause a breakage as string and string name are largely interchangeable. Okay. Remove raycast normals associated with normal split angle from the LOD support. Sounds like a lot of changes that are probably a big deal, but aren't going to directly affect me. This makes a pop-up menu transparent by default now. Names of imported blend shapes and animation libraries from GLTF has been changed as unsupported characters are automatically removed. Are now removed, okay, fine. I use FBX now that it's supported, to be honest, it's just better. It's not open source, but like, it just works better. Um, change navigation mesh to pass collision shapes by default. This is, I'm interested in this because like, I don't know if you guys remember, like, Last year, I had a lot of trouble with navigation mesh. I could not get my game to run smoothly. I had to limit, um, I was making like a wave based zombie shooter and I had to limit the number of, the number of spawning items in order to get the game to run properly. I could not get it to go past 30 uh, because like there was too many collisions. There was problems. So I don't, I don't know, maybe this will help. I think the problem was probably more the mesh. I'm not too sure, to be honest. I have to revisit that one day. Disable hand tracking by default. Okay. Automatically resolve initial and final actions for the draw list. Rendering device draw list begin has vastly simplified. Edit the camera override has moved from the edit the viewport to the game tab. This is interesting. Animations is markers by Chocolate Man. Markers allow you to create subregions of an animation that you can jump to or looped without playing the entire animation. This is big. I was having an issue the other day where I had an animation for changing weapons, but like the animation from Mixamo was like way too long and I had to go into Blender and cut it down. So if I was able to make a marker in Godot, then maybe I wouldn't have to do that. And I could just like clip the bit that I want to use which is pretty fun. Um, this functionality is supported inside the animation tree where you can easily create an animation nodes custom timeline based on the markers. Nice, yeah, that's exactly what I would have done now that this exists. We also have had a look at modifier 3D, holy shit, wait, okay. To handle 3D model procedural animations partially replacing the depreciated skeleton IK 3D. Wait, 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 oh, hold up. Thanks to the effort of the animation expert, Silk Renew, uh, users no longer need to rely on specific bone structures and arbitrary layouts. This new tool allows for angle limitations, forward axis settings, and is specialized for making 3D character models look in the targeted direction. Interesting. I wonder, I've been using it for arm placement for like a, a FPS, you know? So now we can um, 
come into this and what is it called? Look 3D. Look at modifier 3D. Okay. Shout out. Um, oh, okay. Secondary red bone name. Red origin settings. Time-based interpolation. There's a lot going on here. Okay. So it does need to be a chart of the skeleton. Uh, target node. We need to... So let's just do a hip, right? Hip. Uh, so I'm getting ahead of myself. It just needs to be a node 3D. Uh, it'll just be hit target. I just, I assume these work the same as IK, right? So hip target, um, come back into this and just like move that up to where the hip is roughly. Yeah, I call it the hip target. It's actually the spine because you can't use the hip. Okay, so the target node is the hip target. The bone name is the, uh, generally speaking, it's the one right above the spine or like right above the hip, right? Okay, okay. Okay, it just wants to look at that. It doesn't actually want to... All right, let's have a look at more modifiers. Forward axis, Z. Primary rotation. Uh, secondary rotation. From origin, from self, specific bone. I don't actually know how to use this, by the way. I'm just clicking around. Time-based interpolation. Angle limitation. All of this sounds really good, but I don't think it's going to like rotate with the, um, but what about if I move this up and down? Hang on a second. There might be a new way to do this. Oh, wait, it's giving me an error. Forward axis primary rotate must not be parallel. Oh, there you go. X. Okay, okay, huge. So it's not the rotation, because I used to, like, with, with IK, it's just you change the rotation. But this is, like, potential? It has potential? I don't know, I need to read the documentation. And this modifier will allow you to specify a forward axis and provide two axes, two axis Euler rotation to prevent roll. And yeah, I guess it's good for neck stuff, but, like, this uh, yeah this is cool like let's just go for the neck because that's like really straightforward right so the neck we've got the target he's not really looking at it though you know what i mean like he's moving his head around but he's not looking at the target yeah it's so annoying oh man it's so close but so far we can just make it do a like 360 i guess it's working now what the hell the example you saw before, I only had the head moving. Exactly, yeah, and that's kind of what they intend it to be used for. This is literally for, like, neck control, to make a character look at your player. So this is going to be really good for um, making, like, an enemy, an NPC, look at your player. This is really good for that. Uh, or just, like, if you're using it for, like, an RPG, interactions. When the character changes lock on target, changes the lock on target will take a certain amount of time to rotate instead of immediately rotating the head time-based interpolation yeah i mean okay so i'm trying to use it for like something that it's not meant to be used for i think non-linear dampening origin setting there are some cases where multiple bones need to always point in the same direction such as the eyes for example the angle limitation may cause the bone to flip outside their limits which is not good because the eyes will move significantly. Other settings are an arbitrary origin may help to set. Setting an arbitrary origin may help to solve this problem. For example, to solve the above problem, it is possible to set the head origin. It is possible to set the head to origin for the eyes. I don't understand. Or you can use the bone attachment or parent child node 3D. How do we get this before IK replacement? All right, cool, cool, cool. I don't know, it's positive that we're moving towards this. I really would like an IK replacement though. Sneaking in the, right in before the freeze, the animation team added spring bone simulator. Okay, so we got, we can make anime girl hair. Awesome. Jiggle physics, guys. You know, it has jig jiggle figures, physics. I think we just win now, right? Like we just, we're like, that was just the best engine now. Like, we, how, how can we lose? We have jiggle physics. It's over. Good day number one. Um, okay, distributed video. Springbone is an open source cross-platform module that is distributed by VRM Consortium under the MIT license. 
in Godot as an add-on. It's some improvements by leaning on existing core functionality. Okay, nice. Runtime loading of WAV files. Uh, great. I don't use WAV. It's too big. It's gross. Don't like it. C sharp. Don't care. Now I should read it. The final piece is in place for moving Godot Sharp library and to .NET with all new projects will use .NET 8 by default. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. As mentioned, our last development update, the improvements to the core of our code base has been absolutely staggering. Optimizations to strings, speed efficiency at which they're passed. Adam Scott opened the door for toolmark tool makers to take advantage of temporary files directory. Ocean has broadened the scope with which curve can be applied. That's interesting. Outside of the domains of zero to one. Okay, cool. The biggest of them all is typed dictionaries, guys. Typed dictionaries. This is huge. After the introduction of typed arrays in 4.0, which is also like, I use them all the time. That's really helpful. Type dictionaries rapidly become one of the engine's most requested features. Yes, uh, this is finally a reality. This is really good for like making all of my resources that I use for like FPS, for like an FPS game. When I, when I use my guns, my guns are normally held in a dictionary as resources. So like if I type that and say like, I've got a resource, which is a type weapon, and now I have a dictionary of all the different weapons, it's gonna be a, a dictionary of type weapon, which is gonna make like, just, it's gonna make errors more like less, it's gonna be less prone to errors. I won't be able to put anything in there that I don't intend to. I don't really make that many mistakes like that, but you know, it's just nice, you know, to have it so that when you read the code, it's really clear what's going in. So it's, it's huge. Thanks to the efforts of Thaddeus Cruz, uh, this is finally a reality. Massive. This is massive. Take advan uh, advantage by interfacing with Godot's dictionary type. You can now export type dictionaries from scripts and benefit from much improved Inspector UX to assign the right keys and values. Massive. Oh, yeah, right. You can play the game inside the game tab now, right? Huge. We are now as good as Unity. Uh, literally, unironically, back when the Unity scandal happened like two years ago now, some people would say that not being able to run the game inside the editor was a problem for them. Something that I never really understood, but like, if it's a problem, it's a problem. We need to add that feature. And now we have it in game window embedding. And you can interact with stuff. It's awesome. Huge. Not help for debugging, I guess. Excuse me. I want to test this out. Uh, let's just, first of all, let's just make sure everything runs. Of course, it, it goes over to the other screen. Oh my God. It's, dude, guys, it's not working. Press play to start game. We got this inbuilt tab. I feel like I'm lagging. Let me just, what the heck? Press play to start the game. It's, it's not, it's not in the, why is it just embed it? And what do I press? Well, I guess it works, I guess. Um, okay. Why aren't you in this thing? Embed game on next play, make game workspace floating on next play. They're both ticked. That's gotta be a bug. Um, close. Okay, now, okay, now we're talking. Hell yeah, dude. Look at this, we're out here, we're in the game. Huge, huge, huge. So quite a few quality of life. Oh, we got the export tool button, which is nice. Brings us warning, ignore, start, warning, ignore, restore. I'm gonna use that. That's actually really helpful. Signals in like hierarchy is just like good, you know? Previously it had undocumented functionality, which applied the warning to the entire function unexpectedly. Input, ooh. Notable RPTFRG made their first contribution by lowering the default dead zone. Okay. Uh, by default, I guess for joysticks and having several diligent efforts, expanded drag and drop systems to support dragging and dropping across different viewports. Okay. Nice. Contains oldest code. Yeah, navigation. It's not that great. I'll be honest with you. I don't really like using navigation. Especially Simex have bravely stepped up to bring the process of improving the legacy code. So we've got navigation map synchronization now happening asynchronous, asynchronously in the background, which is pretty good. Smaller impact on frame rate instead of making the entire engine slow down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes baking that took ages, right? Like uh, many also quality of life improvements such as debug indicators. 
right? Physics, a hey, Jolt. This is the big one, right? We got Jolt. This is huge. I never used Jolt. In fact, I was a Jolt hater. I'll be honest with you. I never really liked Jolt. Not because I didn't like using it. I, I in truth, never really used it. I just don't like adding, I don't like using add-ons, to be honest. I'd rather just make it myself. And my biggest issue with Jolt was that when I made the FPS tutorial, I had a lot of bugs um, from people who used Godot Jolt because it was different from regular Godot physics. Uh, most notably the hit from inside. Hit from inside was by default true for Godot Jolt, but is by default false by Godot physics. I don't know if they've fixed that now. Uh, so that always caused a lot of issues for me uh, personally. So I have a personal grudge against Godot Jolt, but I it's it's better physics. It's just better. Let's just be honest. So have things and they've taken it and they've integrated it. Jolt is huge. Yeah, it's it's better. I'm, I, I, I will say I'm a hater because of like personal reasons. It like made my life kind of annoying having to explain that to like every second person in my Discord. But, you know, uh, it's better. Let's be honest. Um, there was already a symbiosis between the their team and Godot. Nice. Hopefully this means that eventually, maybe by Godot 5, like Godot 3D will have like a good physics engine. Maybe. I thought that after Godot 3.5, we would have a good physics engine. We're still, we're still working towards it. May change in future releases. Also lacks some feature of Godot physics. Not a full drop-in replacement. I, I'm checking it out. I think it's in project settings. Physics. Jolt physics. 3D physics. Settings. Physics 3D. Physics engine default. Ooh, ooh. Save and restart. I don't really have that many. Oh, I have the boxes. We can see how they behave differently. It's jolt related. <laughs> Dude, it's actually crazy. So I shoot behind. Oh, pretty similar behavior. Not, it doesn't go as far. Like the other one, I think went out. I'll have to do a video review. Compare the pair. So like previously, when you walk into a box in the wall, it always did really funny stuff. And like, this is obviously still like strange behavior. You would probably prefer that the, the box just stopped moving and you couldn't push into it, depending on its mass. I still think this is a better default behavior than what Godot physics does, which is like, it just goes crazy. Everything else seems pretty good. I've set this template up so that it'll just work with uh, Jolt physics anyway. Like I've, I've taken all the things that had issues with Jolt and fixed them. So, you know, it's, I, th I think it's better. This rendering, oh my God. Massive amount Apple uses. That's like three people. Spent several months last year perfecting Uber shader system, which was earlier designed. Ooh, a mask on light 3D to select what rendering layers will be considered when casting shadows. Whoa. Um, Uber shader allows the engine to be a compiled flexible. Yada, yada. I'm skipping over stuff. After tackling metal rendering, is this just Apple? Is this Apple related? Is this all Apple? Apple? Um, batching has now been implemented Okay, continuing the excellent work on the texture import, the Betsy feature compressor. All right. So if I go to the world, if we go to the directional light now, see how it doesn't draw shadows now? It's good that you've got like the mask now because I never had that. I just assumed it was the same. Physics interpolation, huge, massive, massive improvement. After many requests, and years of patience from within the community. Vertex shading, okay. Vertex shading, an integral part of recreating the PSX style. That's huge. Next game I make, I wanna use PSX graphics, so that's good. Um, this turned out to be a significant endeavor. Okay, okay, I'm bored. It's late. Thanks for stopping by, guys.